Hey, this is Caio. And this is Mike. From EssentialDeveloper.com Tomato 12. So, we finished with the crash? Yes. Well, let me run again and see if we still see the crash. There it is. Okay. Yeah, because we're not doing anything in this method. So what we have to do is to start a flow, and a flow is internal. We don't want to make it public. That's why we have a start game function. Right. Uh, so let's create a flow with the questions and the router and a scoring function. That uh, let's just return zero for now. Okay. But we need to start the flow. Cool. Still crashes. If no one holds the flow... A strong reference, you mean? Yeah, if there's no strong reference to the flow... Well, we just create, we start it, and it goes away. So when our answer callback is fired, we have a weak reference to self in there. And we don't want to have a retain cycle, so that's correct. So here we need someone to hold the flow and return it to us. But our start game so far doesn't return anything. I think we should... But we could return the flow here. I don't like that because it's internal. And then we are exposing to the API clients the start function for the flow. No, we're not. We can have the, the start function as internal as it is right now. Okay. And Just we... the type okay. is public. Okay. But none of its methods are. We could do that. I think it's weird to return a flow. Yeah. Maybe we can have another object or another class that represents better what this is. Right. Yeah. Well, it could be some kind of game state struct. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can just have a class game yeah. that represents a game state and this can be public and we can document it saying that you should start a game and hold it while the game is in play. Yeah. And even in the future we can have functions like stop game and we pass the game. Or we can have more functions that have these public interfaces that receive this game state for us or validate game state or something like that. So, should we use a public class or a public struct in here? I think it makes sense to be a class. We're going to be holding the flow. The flow is also a class. So, I don't think we would gain anything by making this a struct right now. We could change this in the future if needed. What we can do here is we can have a, this public class game that have a flow. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yes. And we need to initialize it with a flow. And these are internal. Yeah, the property is internal, the initializer is internal. Only this function can create games. Yeah. That's pretty much it. I want this game to be just a game state, really. It doesn't do any functionality, it just holds state. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can invoke functions on it. So, yeah, what is wrong here? I need to, uh, yeah, the generics. That didn't help much, so we can probably have the same signature here. And then we have our question, answer, router. That's it. That's it. So now we can return the game. We can return a game. It also has a question, answer, and router. I'm pretty sure there's a better way to do it. Is uh, I think that's very verbose. Look. Yeah. <laughs> and we can return now the game with the flow. And again, nobody can access this flow. Can even see it outside this module. They can only see the type. And maybe we're going to expose something here in the future. Right now we think that's fine. And we need to hold it here as well. And now we have a failing test. Okay, that's better. Ah. Now we can return this and make this test pass. Okay, we also have a warning because we are not directly using this game. But what if we get rid of it? Oh, we're gonna have the same problem, right? We're also not holding a strong reference to it yeah. in the scope of this function, so we can have our game here. It can be of type string, a string router spy, and we can, well, let's make this a var. Yeah. And we can also move our router. Okay, so you're holding a, a strong reference as a property? Yes. That should do it. Okay. No warnings and the test pass. Yeah. But we have hard coded values in okay. the implementation, so let's deal with that. So I wanna add another test. Zero out of two correctly scores zero. And here scores one. 
So if I have two wrong answers, I want it to be zero. Okay. But of course it's one because it's hard coded. So let's create a private function here that scores. Scoring answers. There is a dictionary of question answer with correct answers, also question answer. Right. And we need the generics. We need the generics here again. Hashable and our answer. And it should return an int. True. Let's return one here just to go back to the stage we were. Whoops, it's going to capital. Oh, sorry. Oh, of course, we need to pass the correct answers. Okay. Okay, so we have our failing tests still, but now we have the answers and the correct answers. We just need to iterate and validate the answers are correct. We can probably reduce. Reduce. Or we can have a for loop. Or reduce. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can get our answers and reduce to an integer. And we should start with zero. We are going to get our question answer tuple. And here we have to return. Well, and the accumulated. We also get the accumulated integer, so score and question and answer. Yeah. Or let's just call it tuple. Okay. So now we can return score plus we need to get the correct answer for the tuple key and compare with the tuple value, correct? If so. they are yeah. equal, we return plus one mm -hmm. or plus zero. Yeah, we can put some parentheses. Yeah. And we have a problem. Oh, it's one question mark. Oh, just one question mark. Okay, let's see what happens now. Okay. The answer needs to be equatable. And the answer here needs to be equatable. Of course, because we are comparing them. All right, it passes. Let's see what happens if we get all the answers correct. If this is A2, this score should be 2. 2. Two out of two correctly scores two. Boom. That's it. We have a game. That and it scores. It. I'm very excited. <laughs> That's it. I think we are done in this module. We didn't have to create any exclusive module yet, just the result. I quite like that. Mm -hmm. You keep our options open. Right. And I think that's good. We can go fast by creating those simple solutions and we have tests backing up everything we do. Yeah. We're good. So those are our only public interface. And check that. We don't even have to make it testable to have this kind of integration test here. And we can have a router implementation now and bind everything together. Okay, let's do it. Before we commit then, let's do some refactoring this test. There is duplication here, here, and here. So since they are all the same, I think for the first time we're gonna have a setup Okay. And we can just move our game initialization to here. And we can get rid of this. Yeah, very close scope. The bank is very close to the initialization, so I'm happy with that. So let's commit and move on. So this is a new diagram. Our engine is finished. We have our public interfaces. Yeah. We have our result model. We have the router protocol that's going to be implemented somewhere in here. We have our game state that is represented by an object and the start game function that creates everything for us because no one can create any of those models outside this framework because we don't have public initializers. So we control the start of the game in here and we have tests for all of those together mm -hmm. and our flow is private. So we might change how this flow works without breaking anyone outside this. So our presentation layer now can map results models to our UI. Our router can implement the router protocol. And the main module bind everything together through factories or assemblers, or we're going to decide what we're going to use. Not the app delegate, but something in the main module, right? That's the glue code here. The yep. main put all the legal pieces together. Excited. Very. <laughs> okay, now we're back to our quiz app and it's time to implement the router. And we need to import the engine to this project. Mm -hmm. We could use CocoaPods, we could use Cartage, or we can just use a workspace yeah. for now. I don't want to have any dependencies in here. We are trying to showcase that you don't need dependencies. Yeah. Let's start simple. Okay? I agree. Let's drag our quiz engine projects here. And we need to get a workspace now in our app. 
and let's call it quiz app and there it is we have a quiz engine and a quiz app in a workspace cool but since this is an ios app we need to have an ios target for the quiz engine mm -hmm. and we can create one here let's call it quiz engine ios that's all we need cool that's it we can get rid of those yep let's make sure all the files have a correct target membership yes so we need to find here the info p list and we just need to change the file to point to the right one mm -hmm. the shared one the same for the tests just quiz engine tests info p list let me try to build this and let's run the tests <laughs> make sure you ran our tests yeah zero tests hmm so the problem is that we need to add our files to the iOS tests. Let me run it and we have some problems because we need to add those to the iOS target. And now... Oh, is it quiz engine iOS now? The product name just needs to match. Hopefully we can run now. Yes. Okay, all our test passes. It's very fast. We are done adding the iOS target for our engine. Good, we should commit. Yeah, definitely. Okay, now we need to allow our app to import the quiz engine and we need to add the embedded binary and we get the iOS version. And it's gonna add it to our frameworks and it adds somewhere in here. I'd like to have a frameworks folder and let's drag it there and move it down next to products. Let's just test if we can import it. And let's run. Yeah. And it works. Okay. It's time to implement the router. Okay. Okay, so let's create a router implementation finally. Let's start with a test. And it's a navigation controller router, correct? Based on our prototype, yeah. So let's call it navigation controller router. That's the concrete implementation. Mm -hmm. Tests. And let's create a test. When I route to a question, present question controller. Okay. So my assertion will be da -da -da, my SUT dot view controllers dot count to be one. So this navigation controller will have a, an array of view controllers. So yeah, it's not the SUT. Yeah. It's a navigation controller. Correct. UI navigation controller already exposes the view controllers mm -hmm. in the stack. Yeah. And so. route to question. That's the first method we're going to test. Yep. Okay. I see what you're doing there. We're going to inject a navigation controller. Okay. Yeah. I like that. So we need to call route to question mm -hmm. and let's say key one yep and the answer callback is could be anything right now anything so we just ignore yep we need to create the SUT and we need to give it a navigation controller mm -hmm. I think also we can remove uh -huh. the parameter name yeah that's it and we need to create a navigation controller and that's easy we just need to have our navigation controller router type now. Let's do it here. Man, we need to fix this mess here. Probably After the router. Folders. After the router. Let's do it. Organize. So let's open this in the bottom here. Look at that. Yeah. Go back to our tests. Oh, make it conform also. Put this here now. Yeah. That's going to be string. Going to be string. And string. Okay. It implements. Router and he has types string string cool and we also need to have this and it needs to be string string and import the engine and we need to import the engine yes and init with the navigation controller and we need to import it with a testable privilege and we need an initializer let's navigation controller UI navigation controller and so we need 
Let's import the UI kit here. Yeah. And the same in here. Okay. We're getting there. Almost there. And we need to in it with a navigation controller. And self dot navigation controller. Equals navigation controller. That's it. We should have a failing test now. Whoa. Navigation. Oh, it's a, there's an I, yeah. Can I compile now? Hopefully. We're gonna have a failing test. And we do. And we do. So to make this pass, we just push something. And it can be anything. We're not testing types yet. Not animated. Okay. I don't care about animation here in my test. Okay. That's it. That we good. have our first test passing. Can you just make private the navigation controller? Here. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's it. Next one. So if we route your question twice, what should happen? Well, to another question, let's say. We should have two here. Yes. So that's what we want. We want to keep putting things in the stack so we can go back and forth. That's it. Okay, let's run this test. Okay. So we're guaranteeing that it's stacking one after the other, but we don't know if it's using the right view controller here. Right. So we need to make a decision. Do we want the navigation controller router to know about the view controllers, or should we have a factor in between? Yeah, I think an interface there providing the view controller is going to get the complexity yeah. out. Okay. Okay, the tomato is done. So let's reflect about this. And I want to say that I quite like the naming here. The router is just a protocol, right? It's a contract we have with the engine. So the implementation of it that lives in a concrete world has the name navigation controller router. So we can have a model presenter router at some point. We can have different implementations and the name already tells what it does. I think it's quite nice because the concrete implementation really tells what it is. Yeah. Another thing is that, do we need a router knowing about the view controllers and creating them? We could do it, but then we would lose the separation, that line we have in our diagrams. Right. So far, that's the change we have now. We have our implementation that's not done yet, but we can already see where it sits. And it crosses this boundary here. Mm -hmm. So it depends on the engine. That is the error of dependency. The engine doesn't depend on anyone outside here. Right. So this dependency here, ties are routing with the engine, and that's fine, that's what we want. That's an implementation of our contract. So the decision we have to make right now is that if we want a line crossing from the routing to the UI, if we somehow create a separation here, some kind of factory protocol, and we have an implementation in main mm -hmm. that ties this routing with this UI, it will give us more freedom yeah. to plug in and out implementations. That would do it, yeah. So that's the trade-off, right? Add a protocol in here and an implementation in May. Well, it's I think it's a small trade-off. You know, uh, it's gonna take very little time to make. Yeah, but the simplicity of just doing this is tempting, and I understand that. But look how yeah. now this routing depends on the UI module. So we cannot plug in a different UI here easily as we want. We want to keep those things separated as much as we can. Right. I don't want to have code like if iPad, if TV inside the router. Right? Yeah, not in here. Maybe in here. Yes, exactly. In main. Not in our business logic, definitely not. Not in here, not in here, not in the UI. That's why I'm very pro of the protocol there. And that's the reason why you have a factory and adding this indirection layer. If you control your dependencies correctly in the main, the trade-off is very, very, very minimal. Yeah. I would say none. I agree. Okay. Yeah, on to the next one after the break. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm.